Hey everyone, what's going on? Today we're going to be building a channel, and in that channel we're going to be building an app. And we are going to make it, and what I mean by make it is use a platform called bubble.is. And inside of bubble, um, you have everything that you need to build an app. Now, just to clarify what I mean by app, um, in 2018, most websites that you visit are actually apps because the content that is presented to you is dynamic. Um, not everybody sees the same stuff. Uh, sometimes it's by geolocation. Sometimes it's by the cookies that you've gathered. Sometimes it's whether you're logged in or not. Um, and you see different types of content for the same URL. And that's what constitutes an app, in my opinion. These are usually categorized as web app which is this, which you open with Firefox or Google Chrome or any kind of uh, browser, and native apps, which you build specifically for a certain uh, OS on a phone. So uh, either iOS or um, Android and that kind of thing. So what I mean by app is going to be web app, and it's going to be accessible on phones, but through a browser. And that's what we're going to be building first. And it is possible to wrap bubble apps in a wrapper and then put them on the app store. We're going to explore that later, potentially. But for right now, we'd like to build our first app to test an idea of a project or a product. And if you look at any type of online app, such as eBay, Crunchbase, Fiverr, um, Eventbrite, there are two things. Uh, and if you look at any app, online, any web app that has dynamic content, uh, you're going to see that there's a lot of uh, similarities between them and really boil down to its two core uh, elements. There's navigation elements and content elements. And if you look at the different, you know, all sorts of different apps, um, a lot of them look the same because they have similar elements and similar design elements. And Two of the most popular navigation elements are the top navigation bar like this and the left navigation bar like this. In the left, you can look at MySpace, Spotify. In the top, you can look at Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, Eventbrite, eBay, Amazon, and a number of other apps. Um, and today, we're going to be building this with the navigation inside of Bubble. Now, it doesn't matter if you're experienced in Bubble or you've only just begun. Set up your account at bubble.is and you're going to get a screen like this. You're going to click new app. You're going to click on start with a blank page over here. And we're going to be at the same exact spot. Now to start, we have to attribute values to our background page. Um, it starts centered, I believe, or custom. We're going to go full width. Width of 1200 is fine. And we're going to uncheck fixed width so that it actually expands to occupy the full width of whatever screen we're looking at, whether it be a 320 pixel phone, very narrow, or a 1440 pixel screen, uh, which is gigantic. Next, we're gonna go flat color. We're gonna give it a value of Fafa, just so that white stands out a little bit better on there. And we're gonna uncheck fix width, yes. Okay, we already did that. Now, you have yourself um, a nice canvas on which you can build your app. And the first thing we're gonna do is actually create that header. Now, there's a number of different um, characteristics and design elements that we can apply to them. Um, the first one is whether or not it stays at the top of the page or whether or not it follows. Now, if you'd like it to stay at the top of the page, you're going to build it exactly the same way as we are, but in, you're going to use the design element called group. The difference between the design element called group and the element that we're going to use for this tutorial is that group always stays in a fixed position relative to your canvas. So you'll notice here, uh, you can't really see it because it's not very, the contrast isn't very good, but let's say you build your menu up here, you start scrolling, the menu will stay at the top of the page. Now, if you want to make it more like crunch base, we're going to delete this, you're going to grab something called a floating group. And the property of a floating group is that it always stays relative to the screen, not to the page. So we're going to make sure the height is 60 and the width is 1200, and we're going to give it a background color. And I decided to pick um, a color palette over here, uh, and I'm going to show you how I did that. I just skipped over for the tutorial for um, speed purposes. But if you go to Peloton.com and you pick a color that you like, 
and you pick monochromatic, it will actually give you the uh, highlights and shadow colors for that base color. And you can actually go ahead into your um, bubble app. And if you go to settings and you go to general and you scroll all the way down, you'll see that you can pick seven colors to store in your color palette. The next thing that we want is, of course, our logo, because usually on the top left corner, you're going to have a return home button that is usually a loop. Uh, we're going to make it a width of 150 and a height that is full height of 60. We're also going to pick a flat color as the background, and we're going to pick the same color as the actual background itself. And there's a reason behind this madness. Next, we're going to pick an image, and I have a logo already set up, and I'm just going to load it in here. Um, and you can add whatever logo it is that you're working on and basically put it in the top left corner over here. Now, this sometimes is a little bit of a problem with width. It changes as you upload the image. So we're just going to reset our width to 150 right here, or perhaps even 148, and then center it horizontally, and then center it vertically. So now we have our logo. And next, we're going to build a group that has a menu item. Let's say you want to navigate. Um, we can make this width either 100 or 150, depending on how long the text that we want to actually add is. Uh, we're going to add some text, and I'm going to keep the standard Lato text, but I am going to make it a size 16, so it's a little bit more visible. And I am going to align it to the center. Next, I'm going to write, let's say, option 1. And now we have our first little button for our menu called option 1. And it's not going to look good unless we pick colors that um, make sense. Now for 16, I think the height that I want is 22. Okay, 25 for 16. I'm going to center it vertically. And that way, the text is going to be aligned to the exact center of my group here. Now group B, I'm going to go flat color. And again, I'm going to pick this background. And the text, I'm going to actually make it off-white. Or I could pick the clearest highlighted color right here. I'm actually going to do this in this instance. Next, uh, you probably want to write, which I didn't do, uh, capital letters here. And we're going to style this button so that the user knows that it can be clicked. And what we're going to do for style is when this group is hovered in the conditionals tab over here. So we're out of appearance, we're in conditionals. When this group is hovered, background style will be a flat color, yes, and background color will be a little bit lighter. And then we can go transitions as well and give a background style a 200 second ease. Next, this group is called group B and we're gonna remember that for the conditionals on the text. And we're gonna say when group B is hovered, then this font color is going to be just a little bit lighter. So FAFA -F -A and um, anything else? No, transitions is going to be font color 200 second ease. Let's see what that looks like. So as we load our app, whoops, I don't know what that is. Must have left some text in there by accident. Is there some text in there? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of text in there. Let's go ahead and hide image A. I don't know where text A and text B are. Okay. Let's see if we could just delete them by selecting them here and pressing delete. No, it doesn't select them. I don't know where they actually are. Uh, they're hiding over here. So I just dragged that group out and now I'm going to make it small again. I'm sorry about that. That's really lame that that had to happen to us. And the next thing uh, that we wanted was just to check that, see this is changing colors. I can refresh it actually. But you'll notice with uh, Bubbles Dynamic Editor, um, that this group is actually spreading to take up the maximum amount of width because my screen is actually 1920 in width. And here I'm building it in 1200. So these are a lot bigger than they are in my design tab. So we could fix that relatively easily by grabbing group A and saying, make this fixed width. And grabbing group B and saying, make this fixed width. Now they should automatically set um, to the left and stay there. All right, so now we have our logo. Uh, this little dotted line will disappear on your logo and it'll look much better. And then you're going to have your option one here. And now option one, when I click on it, should go to page one. Um, and we do want a second page just so I could show you how to navigate between option one and option two. 
Now, holding down control and dragging will make copies, as many as you need, for all of your menu items. And the conditional uh, formatting will also um, basically follow as you copy them. So if you look at this, you'll have option one and option two, and they will both highlight like this. See? Super cool. Okay, now let's say we're going to build a page with a bunch of content in it. So let's go ahead and build that out. This will be our uh, white page. And then we're going to build a help page by holding down control and dragging down a little bit. And group E will be our help page. So we'll make it a slightly different color just so we can see. All right, so our option one is going to be the white page. And our option two is going to be this gray page. Now we're going to get rid of them by saying this element is visible on page load. We can say no. Now we have to find a way to show them. Because if it's invisible on page load, they're not, they're not going to be here, right? Now, when I click on option one and option two, I want them to show up. Now, there's two ways of navigating. And like you saw in Eventbrite, when we switched from help to the main page, it took a little while um, because it's reloading the page. Uh, and, and, and this basically takes a little bit longer than what you're used to in places like social media, like Facebook or Twitter or Instagram where the loading is almost instantaneous. And the loading is almost instantaneous because you actually stay on the same page and you display different content. Now here for the intents and purposes of this tutorial, we're going to assume you're building an MVP and speed is important. So, and you won't have a lot of data, um, especially at the beginning. Like you won't have a lot of users, you won't have a lot of content to look through. So we're gonna build this app as a single page app. And what that means is we're never going to leave the page index. We're just going to show different parts of index based on what we click. Okay, the considerations are a little bit more complex than that, but um, this should be good enough for now if you understand that. Uh, it's faster if you have less data to load to not actually create a new page, but to stay on this one and show different things. Now, to show different things, we need to send... Um, some information to the URL. So let's go to start edit workflow here. We clicked on option one, which is group B. And then we said start edit workflow. Make sure you click on the group, not the text. And then it's going to be a navigation thing. Very simple. Go to page, same page we're actually on, index, as we saw earlier. And we're just going to send more parameters to the page. We need to set, call the parameter P. You can call it whatever you want. P is for page. That's good enough for me. And we're going to call it one. And we're going to copy that. And we're actually going to do the same thing for the group that is behind option two. Start edit workflow, paste it in, but this time we're gonna send a P of two. And now if you go to your design tab and you click group E, you can give it a conditional because right now it's hidden. You can say when get data from page URL parameter, and what do we call it? P is one, then this element is visible. True. Same thing for group D. We will actually, we'll just copy this, go to group D and paste it in. Whoops, I'm misclicking a little bit. Paste, we did write two. So this one will send one to the page URL. And if it's one, it'll show group E. This one will send two. And if it's one, it'll, if it's two, it'll show group D, element is visible. So let's go ahead and make sure that works. As we load it, we have no data in our page URL, so it shows nothing. But when we click here, it's actually going to add a little parameter called p equals one to our URL. And because p equals one in our URL, then this group shows. So in this group, I would put all the stuff like all the other groups, like, okay, this picture, this big picture in the back, and this group, this group, this group. And then I would start building out what this particular thing looks like. Okay. And in option two, you'll notice that this changes to P equals two, and we have the white one show up. I don't know if you could see this on the recording, but the white one is actually showing up over the background. So at this point, you've basically learned to make a floating header with um, different navigation options. You pass parameters just like Google does or Instagram, um, and you can navigate through the different content groups of your app. And in the next video, we're going to create a, a little bit more complex of a menu here uh, a drop down that looks sort of like this with the different options. And we're going to learn a little bit more about the capacities of Bubble using repeating groups. So I hope, uh, I hope this has been fun and that you join me in the next one.